What's up everybody, Bootsy Greenwood here, and not to beat a dead horse, but you don't create your reality. But let me tell you why, that's the best news you could hear. So in the past couple of videos, I've been full of piss and vinegar, talking about getting cucked by the New Age movement, and a lot of people who are selling straight, flat up snake oil, telling you that you're responsible for all of this stuff, these negative events that have happened to you, and you're not. You know, that's blaming the victim. And telling you that the reason why you don't have the reality that you want is because you don't believe hard enough, which the gall and audacity of these people. I've been to the church, okay? I grew up in the church, so I'm fully aware of some of these ideas. That said, Faith is important, and it is important to have a belief in the universe and that it cares for you. But here's the thing about it. You don't create your reality, okay? You choose and you decide your relationship to that reality. The things that you want to bring into the world are brought in an emotional way. Emotions are the language of the universe. The spirit doesn't speak English or any other language for that matter. It speaks emotions. That's how it communicates. So instead of you know, saying a, a phrase over and over again, which can help over time, I'm not saying that affirmations aren't useful, but it's more important to think about our emotions. That is going to change our thoughts a lot faster than making ourselves think these thoughts. Now, a big thing that happens to a lot of us is we lose control of our thought life. And one book that's really good is called Outwitting the Devil. I highly recommend the book. It's written by Napoleon Hill, and it's all about like changing your relationship to your thought life, taking active control of the things that you think. Most of us uh, in the world don't even think that as a possibility. Most of us go through life, and I can speak from experience because I was this way for 30 years of my life, frankly. I just went through life, and I wasn't thinking. I was being thought, okay? being thought. I wasn't thinking actively. I wasn't thinking critically. I wasn't asking questions about the universe or how things worked. Now, one word or a series of words you might hear from time to time and even in the conspiracy world is mind control. Sounds scary, but let's think about it from a first person perspective, right? Are there influences and propaganda? I mean, everyone out there is vying for your attention. The ideas that are being pushed in front of us are there to capture your attention and to capture your emotions, frankly, so that you begin to actively participate in whatever movement, right? We've talked about these as egregores or pendulums or thought forms, okay? And what these things are is, I don't think they're conscious necessarily, but they're groupings of thoughts. So here you are. You have your own view of the world. You have your own layer of reality, your reality tunnel that you're responsible for. Now that adds to the collective whole. Now let's call this straight line here, let's call this straight line reality. Okay, the straight line is reality. And it's practically unwavering the way that I have it, okay? Now your influence on reality could, could, could change it a little bit, not too much, but it, it could change it a little bit. Now, basically, you could be down here saying, you know what, I'm a victim. You know what, this reality sucks. You know what, you know, I have no power over my reality. And that would put you down into a lower lifeline or timeline as a lot of people call it right and that would affect the way you view reality your reality tunnel okay now if you have active goals that you're seeking then it's very possible to get there through a lot of hard work and a lot of effort and diligence and those things are all very important they have their own merit but it's not enough because that's not the language of the universe the universe doesn't care how hard you work the universe doesn't care how many times you call a person that you're trying to get in touch with, they may not answer the phone, okay? 
But luckily for me, I was able to do some amazing things because just the way emotionally that I was interacting with the universe. I had the opportunity to get on cruise ships and tell jokes. I had the opportunity to, to travel to Spain and get paid for it. You know, I've, I've had some amazing opportunities come my way. And especially when I've been, you know, had a, a positive view of reality. When my reality tunnel was customized and I was communicating emotionally with the universe in a way that, that I believed that it supported me. And I believed that it was there for me and it wanted me to have my goal. Why would God or the great universal spirit or the universe or whatever you want to call it give you a desire for you not to fulfill it? That's absolute torture. And as we talked about in the very first video in this series, those desires are there for a reason. They're there for you to, to work on it. Have you ever been at work and you're like, <laughs> this has happened to me a few times and I have to admit it. Have you ever been at work and you're like, ah, man, you know, such and such really should be done. Somebody should do that, like whatever it is. I've been there so many times. And do you know what the message is when that is happening? Yeah, it's your turn. Move the sandbag or whatever it is, you know what I mean? If there's a cable that somebody's going to trip over and you notice it, I, I feel like that's a pretty clear signal that you should move the cable instead of being like, oh, well, that could be disastrous. But we do that, you know, and I've done it too. I'm not hating. All right, so if you elevate, if you want to elevate your lifeline, there's one way to do it, and that is emotionally, okay? So you can still go for these goals. You can still have these ideas, right? And all these variations exist. All these different realities exist in the other side in, of the mirror in the dream world, and they do. Now, here's the thing about it, though, and you know this because you've had experience. No goal that you ever accomplish looks like it did when you visualize it, okay? It could emotionally be similar. You could have the same emotions when you accomplish that goal, but it's never gonna look like the visual that you saw in your mind when you began working toward that goal. It's just not. Now, we use visuals for a reason. It's a way to create emotions within us so that we can begin to broadcast those emotions out into the universe. And then we take action on top of that in order to get to our goal one step at a time with a lot of failure, a lot of failure. If you don't like failure, well, you're probably just gonna to wanna to not try because that's the only way to ensure that you won't fail. So I'll be honest with you, most people don't care when you fail. I've failed a lot, I've bombed on stage, nobody cares. If I do really well, then people will basically forget all the retroactive failures for the most part, right? There is such a thing as cancel culture and things like that. But when you do decide that you're gonna elevate your reality, and get onto a higher timeline, or lifeline, or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter, it's all the same stuff, you're like, yay, here we go. Now, you can, you will become a part of something. You're like, you will build a reality tunnel, you will build a layer of reality that will literally broadcast and communicate with the universe exactly what it is that it wants for you, that you want, and then you'll begin to you know, create that reality or live that reality or choose that reality, right? And you'll begin to walk in that sort of way. And that will begin to elevate reality a little bit. And it will begin to elevate all the other people around you and their reality tunnels or layers of the world or whatever we want to call it. It doesn't matter. It's all the same stuff. And we begin to elevate reality that way a little bit. A little bit and then the collective reality begins to shift a little bit at a time a little bit at a time a little bit at a time paso a paso step by step failure by failure so in my experience when I've had something that I wanted to attain and I went for it I was almost always rewarded with something better than I could have asked for that I could have even fathomed there's no way in the world I would have said hey you know what would be awesome what I really want is to tell jokes on, on the impractical jokers cruise ship in front of a big audience, I mean, how, a 2,000 seat auditorium. No, I didn't know to ask for that. My, I was like, I just wanna do okay on an open mic. But I visualized. I visualized feeling well. I feel, visualized being comfortable on stage. I got rid of some of the crap that's in me with some of the uh, release exercises that I have available on some of the other videos. Um, <clears throat> that's Jim Shane's work, and it's excellent, and I highly recommend it. But because of that, I wound up literally, I was, I got to, I got to open up for the Impractical Jokers Comedy Showcase on, um, on the, on the cruise. And I, I literally was standing in front of 2,000 people in an auditorium 
welcoming the first comedian to the stage. I was nervous as hell. I didn't expect to be up there for that. But that was much, much better than anything I could have asked for. And that's the kind of thing that happens whenever you begin to use mind control. Mind control. To govern the mind. Actually, I believe that's what government means, if I'm not mistaken. Which, you know, if we begin to govern mind our own selves, then things might start to look a little bit different. In our reality tunnel, or sphere, or layer of the world, or sphere of influence, that is really the key. So, today I have, from a friend of mine, some, who's been very generous, my friend Chris, some, uh, some mind control exercises, where you can begin to implement these exercises just to make sure that you're paying attention. These are like mindfulness exercises and they're very simple, but they're also very useful. It's like a lot of times we set our keys down or our coffee and we forget about it and we just go on to the next thing. And a big reason why we are being thought instead of thinking ourselves and the reason why our emotions are basically being you know, manipulated by outside forces is because we don't have control of our mind. We need to control our mind, we need to build a fortress around it, and only allow the thoughts in that we really want to see in our reality tunnel, in our sphere of the world, and begin to implement that, which will elevate our lifeline and influence other people and begin to shift reality in a more positive direction. So I hope that's been helpful, guys. Uh, I appreciate your time. Check out my website, bootsagreenwood.com. I have stuff over there. Check me out on Patreon. Peace. comics in the house. These guys go on tour with the Jokers all around the world. And they're on the ship tonight. You guys been having fun on the ship? You been exploring around the ship? You guys been to the gym? One person said yes. Polly D's in the house. Give it up. I know you guys have been at the buffet though. I've seen you all there. We have a saying down south where I'm from, it's pretty dirty though. Fuller than a tick on a tampon. That's how I feel when I leave the buffet. Oh my god. I crushed like a Gatorade and then smashed like three waffle cones before I came here. I think I just got diabetes right now. That high, that buzz. I think we're all going to have a little bit of health problems when we get off of the ship. That's all right, though. We only live once, right? You can't die twice, can you? Right. Are you guys ready to get the show our way? Yeah. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, it gives me a lot of pleasure to bring out your first comic. You know him. You love him. He's one of the producers of The Jokers. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Casey Jost. <laughs> 